I know with the casting and everything. With this, uh, with the one 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 one, just going back and forth, back and forth. Are you a fan of that as well? Because that is different than the one two two one that we have with lock picking in before modes. Um, I think a lot of people I've talked to, competitors especially, are not a fan of the one one one. I think they would prefer the one two two one okay. setup that was, uh, I guess, lock pick utilize uh, they feel like first pick has too much an event an advantage in this situation um yeah i can kind of agree with them so uh, i think most people would prefer the one two two one but certainly not a uh something that's impossible to deal with yeah but um one two two one does sound a little more balanced perhaps in the end but mm -hmm. like i said it's not a huge deal yeah Obviously, there you know with in this case with the Hellborn side. I mean, it's what what is your take on that? By the way, just the Hellborn in general. I mean, it's clear you know whenever teams want to roll, ninety five percent of the time they choose Hellborn as their side. It, do do you think there is an obvious Hellborn advantage? I think that? it's probably just still the Congor. Of course, Congor has been addressed in the past, and it's not as easy to simply take the Congor yeah. free kill when you were Hellborn as it was, but. Uh, Still a factor, and ultimately, I think that is probably what it comes down to, Greggy. Yeah. All right, so moving on with this game, though, specifically. We do see the scout response, so sure enough, we got that in the end for Lions. I'm sure Jonas Van excited to see that himself, even. But look at that Arachna pickup. And you, you do think of, again, we talked about this yesterday, I believe it was, with Arachna, where she tends to be kind of that carry option that's more of a counter to an extent if you're going to pick her up. Now, the... Uh, her ultimate, the Spider Sting, it is good against a hero like Scout because it does go through the invis and will stick on him, so... Do you think that's maybe some logic here coming out from DCX? I think so. I think the fact that Keeper of the Forest is actually still on the board. Well, okay, if yeah. they pick Keeper, it has to be a jungle Keeper. So, actually, scratch that. Never mind. I'm stupid. Um, usually, we saw SG pick up Arachna in the past. I felt like it was almost as a response to Keeper of the Forest with that. Let's see what it's called. Hardened Carapace. Mm -hmm. Being able to freely um, uh, escape, I suppose you could say, out of the Keeper route was, I think, the most attractive part of it. And also, just her laying presence uh, makes her a fantastic carry. Akin to kind of silhouette, where she's just going to absolutely dominate probably any hero she comes up against, especially a scout in this case. I expect scout to just get absolutely screwed by this arachna. So, yeah, I think it, it probably is mostly uh, predicated towards the scout pick. Of course, the spider sting will reveal him when he is using that vanish. And then, of course, like I said... Uh, expect Arachna to absolutely dominate the scout in the lane. Yeah. Banning phase picking up here. Master Lodestone Torture Keeper, as you're talking about. So one more ban on either side now before we get into those next tier as far as uh, who needs what still. Oh, forgot I was on d, d No d, d check this time, but got the old chat to remind me. Uh, Rally, the final ban here on DCX side. So I haven't seen him in this series yet. Fade, the final ban alliance. So... Again, as far as what they could still use, could still use that middle presence. Speaking of those last two bands, um, obviously a lot's taken out. They're going to go with Pharaoh, actually, as their option. Pharaoh, great suicide artist in the end. Figuring uh, he's the, the best option here. Um, back over to Lion Esports Club now. Yeah, I kind of prefer Pharaoh as a, uh, not really a hard counter, but a pretty good counter to most carries, especially range carries, and even Draconis, when we saw him, uh, I think Draconis kind of fell out of favor because people learned that Pharaoh was such a hard counter. And basically, when a Pharaoh hooks you and uses Barbed Armor's Draconis, you cannot activate your ultimate. Mm -hmm. Or your your best chance is just to simply get, not activate your ultimate and attack someone else besides the Pharaoh if they're actually in range. But if you can't do that, I mean, you're basically screwed. Your impact in the fight is very minimal, at least unless you can survive long enough for Pharaoh's Barbed Armor to uh, dissipate and uh, get off that ultimate and all the damage you would normally want to. So I usually like to see Pharaoh in that role. Of course, he is still a fantastic um, suicide hero. And here's Bubbles even, so that's going to make life a little harder for Pharaoh. It's, it's It can be so frustrating to play Pharaoh against... Heroes that have you know simple escape mechanisms yeah. like a bubbles or a hag, so gonna make life a little harder for Pharaoh. And here's a pick that uh, I always love to see. I love to see the Wombo combo ult. So I feel like it just creates another level of hype and flux. So that flux ng combo breaky 
going to be in full effect here. It, it's awesome. And, you know, Flux in general, I've always been a fan of the hero, even since he was released. I like the the idea of the hero, the how he, uh, you know, being that, being that range strength hero in the first place and just on top of how he plays. So, um, a fan of the hero, and yeah, to know that he, he is kind of no doubt a niche hero, but in this case, this is where it fits, and this is definitely a top tier strategy, as we've seen many times. So that Flux Engineer combination, as you put it to that, that Wombo combo is always fun to see uh, coming out here. So we'll see. Uh, I'm sure DCX at least attempt to go for it, whether or not they can pull it off in the end. This isn't the easiest thing, but we'll see. Lion Esports Club, though, their final pick. And actually, with that Bubbles pick, it does kind of make you raise an eyebrow a little bit, like, okay, what are we going to see now? So we are going to see this time a little, di little bit different. Scout's going to most likely be more of a priority farm here. Unless they want to try to run some kind of tri-lane pebbles, but I think it's going to be more of a 2-2-1 in the end. Yeah, I don't really like tri-laning up against a jungler, unless they can just ward the crap out of his his uh, jungle. But if they if he does get away with counter-warding his spawns, I feel like DCX is in a fantastic position in this game. I like DCX draft. I feel like they have really good lanes. Um and you know, maybe this bubbles pick was they were just they were worried that Scout would get crushed by Arachna. Now we do have Jonas and Fan playing the Scout, so I expect him to be in that suicide lane and perhaps Flinsmeister. Um gonna be taking out the mid roll even here? I don't know. They have a lot of options here, but you know, if they were to do like a standard suicide to uh dual mid and then of course um dual top, I feel like DCX would be in a pretty good position. Uh, I feel like Flux NG is just a fantastic lane. It can usually beat almost anything. And then, of course, whoever Arachna is up against in the bottom lane will be screwed. Then, of course, if Parasite can find some good farm in the jungle, they're going to be in great shape coming out of the lane phase. But uh, I'm not really sure what Lions is going to opt to do. I think yeah. they could even go for an aggressive jungle here. It, it looks like it. And, yeah, I'm a little bit thrown off by that. And it... it Mainly, I guess, the synergy, it's, it is it is actually there now that I think about it. But actually, they're going to be in a lot of trouble right here. Pebbles in a lot of trouble. This is also a nice wall off from Empath, though. And that'll completely cut off the Legion team. And also, you saw what happened there. He managed to counter ward basically at the same time. That, that was awesome by Lion Esports Club. And what looked like it could have been a very deadly spot for Pebbles to run into ended up being a, well, one battle in the end, really, for Lion Esports Club right there. So... Good start for them, but yeah, it's uh, they are going to be running an aggressive trial lane from the looks of it here. Yeah, it was a great counter ward for sure, but I feel like they've revealed a little about their strategy, and yeah. with this, you know, it makes sense that I kind of didn't really think about now, but of course Arachna, not the best hero going up against an aggressive trial lane, so um, kind of revealing their strategy there has caused DCX to make some changes. Now, this is pretty good for them. I definitely think this is fantastic for them. They're going to have a rack now. Of course, she is going to be in this long lane, which is pretty awkward in some ways, but she will be up against a scout, which is what the matchup I was talking about being very favorable for her. And then Pharaoh will actually be the hero kind of playing that suicide role in his own short lane even, and, you know, with good positioning, he should be okay down this bottom lane. And, of course, Flux probably going to get some great farm down here, or excuse me, in the middle lane as well. So good adjustment by DCX. Definitely... Uh, recognizing that this aggressive trial lane would have been too much for them to handle. Yeah. You do see Empath kind of roaming on over. and So, now Engineer also doing similar. He's also roaming here. Uh, but, you know, Empath bubbles lane, not necessarily your uh, your lane that you think about when you put it together. It, what do you do here for the help? I mean, do, do you just ultimately send Empath all the way to the top lane, or do you just basically have a 2-2 two -two here with uh, a bubbles Empath lane at the end? Uh, I think this is okay. Scout is going to survive up here. He's not going to do fantastic, but it kind of doesn't really pay for Empath to be bottom at all. Yeah. So just rotating her in this middle lane is probably be a little better than the top lane. She actually is making her way up top. Maybe just going to do some scouting even and try to find Parasite, who she probably will run into right freaking here. Oh. So Parasite jumps out of his creep just in time. If he hadn't been paying attention, yeah. that could have been some nice gold XP for Empath. Yeah, that on top of just uh, preventing it from Parasite even. So, Bottom lane. Are they going to initiate? Yes, they are actually. Pharaoh's in a little bit of trouble right here. He does have the moment wall. It's going to cut through it. But remember, he's on the Legion side here, so he's going to need to make kind of a getaway. Oh, but the creep wave actually happens to pull him right in right there. Going to follow him up, but I think... <laughs> okay, the Zeal Sun hits. Yeah, he's going to be fine. Oh, and regen rune. We'll see if he can actually use it efficiently, though. Uh, the, oh, gets it taken off right away. <laughs> Unfortunate. But he does survive in the end. That's what matters. Actually going to pull the creep wave while he's at it. 
wonder if he could actually pull these into the neutrals. Let's see if he does that. Yeah. yeah. There you He's going to pull them into the neutrals, so... Um, going to get some pretty good farm here, kind of <laughs> laning against the Minotaurs at this point. But, uh, yeah, I feel like he's going to have a pretty good uh, time in that bottom lane. And Flux actually going very hard on Bubbles here. Empath was coming in, and Empath could have gotten there a hair earlier, perhaps. That could have been a kill. So, actually, Nymph 4 is coming over here to try and screw with Feral. Let's see if he can steal this Minotaur with his stun, maybe. Nice. Oh, I think the creeps got it. I think they got the big one. Yeah, they did, so, but uh, he got the small one. But that was pretty good for Feral. He's level 3 now. He can even... I don't know what he's going to do with this creep. He's actually going to pull it into here even. Not probably going to be able to farm both camps, but... Some jungling from Feral. Yeah. Standard. Hey, I mean, you get the opportunity like he did, and well, not only did he stay alive, but hey, got some good farm out of it, and it's work. It's paying off in the end. So especially with those the buff to the neutral creeps as well against or the uh, lane creeps to, against those neutral creeps, even uh, even more of a reason why that worked out better for Pharaoh. Of course, that happened a while back. So, what is your take on that? By the way, now that we've had a little bit of time to to adjust to that, the, the obviously with the pole camp and everything, triple stacking and pulling it now. It, uh, have you been a fan of that change or did you not really like it in terms of the uh, um, creeps and neutrals? It's okay. I'm really bad at it, so I usually forget. So it's bad for me. But um, as far as my take on it, I mean, there's there's varied opinions. Some people say you can just simply double stack it, kill it really quickly, and then go do something else. Like you, it usually take you much longer to just to you know get the full experience from the double stack because the creeps took longer to kill it. But now, if you just pull a double stack, you can get uh, some really quick golden XP, and well, gold is kind of iffy it is pretty hard to last hit but um so there's kind of varied opinions that's certainly an opinion some people share and some people don't like it because it takes so freaking long just to triple stack three times it kind of, can kind of hurt you in the end as a support if you don't plan on leaving and being active so um yeah there's certainly some varied opinions myself i'm more of the it's a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah so three and a half minutes in here as the game progresses coming out of the pause Middle matchup. What is? How's this one going? Flux 16 and 8. Pebbles. Oh, Bubbles. Excuse me. This one is going up against 15 and 6. So, seems like that's actually a pretty back and forth. It's been 1v1 for a lot of it. Remember, as uh, Parasite trying to go uphill, he actually gets completely cut off by an Empath. All oh, right there. Empath kind of toying with him a little bit. He does have a two-level advantage, but Empath still not too worried. In fact, he actually has Scout coming over. Look at this too. Scout blocking the camp from spawning as a. Uh, Way to prevent a Parasite from also having a good time. So, good coordination right here between the two. And actually, Scott going to go back to the top lane and continue to farm up there. So, some nice harassment happening on a Parasite. But actually, he does still pick up a Wild Hunter. This could be bad here for the Hellborn team if they're not careful. Yeah, Arachna is not level 6 yet. So, it's going to be hard to set up a kill on the Scout, I think. Unless he's just really cut out of position. Empath would be their ideal target. And Seal okay, kind of poking his head out, but... I don't know if he's come out quite far enough. Yeah, Engineer seems to have given up. Not really worth it. Parasite just kind of poke him. Hey! But, uh, yeah, not a whole lot going on. Breaking no no kills yet. Uh, looks like Pharaoh has lost lane control pretty badly in this bottom lane, so um, he will probably not be able to get too much down here and just kind of roaming around looking for something to do. But uh, pretty passive so far. I mean, we'll have to see when the first kill... Will come out. I mean, oh. It's, oh, here we go. Yeah, you might have spoke a little too soon right there. We do see Parasite actually being gone. It will be enough for the kill scout. Now level six just hit himself, so he's not going to be able to marksman shot. You see, Rakta putting down the rev board actually. Yeah, scout went invis right there, and now scout's in a little bit of trouble. Rakta though not level six herself either. She might be pretty close. She's uh, trying to get this creep kill here. No, not going to hit it. But uh, in the end, scout does make his getaway. It's a little bit of back and forth, but Parasite will have to fall back as scout just going to activate a health potion. And be fine. Arachna, though, 25 and 11 compared to a 12 and 4 scout. So, I mentioned this decision by the DCX uh, to go with it right here away. Definitely paying off. And yeah, here we go. And DS going to be caught on the Spiderling. Did so much damage. He kills the Spiderling, but it doesn't matter. He still falls. And now Empath actually did a lot of trouble. Oh, the slow, the slow, the dot damage stacking. One more. Double. That is not what you wanted to do <laughs> if you're a Line Esports Club. Oh, it certainly wasn't. Almost 400 gold per minute. I just like to look at the gold per minute after Bloodlust to see it just ramp up. And, you know, almost 400, about 384 Imba Boy. So fantastic plays. Uh, just 
being able to acquire, I think, those steam boots there really was what ultimately led to the kill, because I think Scout could have escaped, like, if he killed the spider as fast as he did, but just the extra damage from the steam boots uh, certainly contributing to that kill, so excellent start for Imp Boy, and there's a long lane Arachna. Kind of funny how these lanes yeah. actually ended up. Certainly some, I, I like the drafting from Hanskin. I, it's pretty rare we see like an aggressive trialing a lot, especially from Lions, but all oh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. <laughs> Still Pharaoh. jungling. <laughs> and maybe jungling a little bit too long. Bubbles and uh, Nymphora, they're going to go in right here. Zealstone hits, the wall comes out, and Pharaoh, there's nowhere to go. They're all range. And he does die in the end. Well played right there. By the Hellborn side, Empath securing his fate. Top in the meantime, Scout's going to be dove on once again. It looks like Spider Sting not even necessary there. He had both Engineer and Parasite to support, so kind of explains how Scout was taken out in the end. So good good, uh, good things happening for either side right there, but the big picture, you have an Arachna now, 420 gold per minute. The Energizer just finished, and it's being delivered to her. Or was it actually? She might have changed it up. Oh, yeah, that is, yeah. so she has an Energizer as well as a Ring of the Teacher. Being finished here, it looks like. Now, bottom tower gonna be killed, however. So, Pebbles, we can't forget about him. Super KGE. He has been having a. Well, what's basically been a free farm down here. 52 and 18 creep farm. That kind of explains itself. Seven and a half minutes. Jeez. That's really good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Didn't miss very many. Uh, you would expect that, of course, especially with Pebbles with the hatchet. And then, of course, yeah, Pharaoh getting zoned out very effectively. Yeah. Buying for four. They're actually level five, so not doing not the end of the world there. Top tower as a response also goes down, and yeah, Rack not 400. If you guys think she got the tower last hit on top of three kills and 36 creep kills, Imba Boy's got to be pretty pleased with himself right now. Yeah. yeah big uh, big start here for DCX. And again, you, you got to you gotta respect their, their lane decision there in terms of choosing to send what? The long lane Arachna usually wouldn't speak for good success, but in this case, it was the right choice, as we see. Parasite in a lot of trouble. The hasted bubble's coming. Parasite, oh! He tried to infest, but the marksman shot hit him at the last second. That was a great, great timing gank right there from the Hellborn side. In the meantime, though, the bottom lane, Pebbles and Nephora, they do find, uh, they do find Feral once again, and he does die. So, again, both no, sides having some good kills. Does yeah, there's certainly cheese. those were some really big kills actually and the gold XP pretty much even at this point. The engineer roaming down here with Arachna, hoping to find a kill, especially on that Pebbles, because they know he's gotta be close to that portal key, but they are not successful, and I believe he will just go pick it up in the side shop. Flux actually interesting item choice here, has opted to go for the ghost marcher, so oh, top lane scout. Gonna take hmm. some harassment, but ultimately with the silence I believe he used going to be perfectly fine but yeah ghost marchers on flux i mean usually steam boots are pretty stable with that uh the strength gain mm -hmm. helping his magnetic surge but yeah i've seen this build before and this game it's eh, i think steam boots are still better especially because of the bubbles ult you can't yeah. really run away from that but you can run away from scout and of course uh it will make him a little less tanky than you would like to be as that flux he actually has a invis rune bottle up here and we'll see if he has any way of making use of it, but yeah, he's actually got 300 GPM himself, so uh, compared to the, t the 270 from Bubbles, he's only got 20 and 11 versus a 45 and 19 Flux, so mm -hmm. looks like in the end, Book had a fantastic time in this middle lane. Yeah, Flux definitely had a better time with the Creep Farm, but obviously the benefit of this is does give a little more presence in terms of ganking. We do see at the bottom lane, Tilla doing a good job of kegging himself right there, but it's just not going to be nearly enough. Kelfield's used it even the Chuck after that to guarantee that kill, so uh, they're going to get a a couple to be used, so that's going to be on cooldown now for 75 seconds. But obviously, can they got a kill out of it, so it's definitely worth it for Lion Esports Club. Um, but yeah, so maybe that's what uh, what Book's thinking here as far as the Ghost Marcher pickup goes. He's going to activate that Invis finally. And uh, right on top of Red Boar. That is not good. Oh, he's just out of range. No, he is not. He's going to be combat down. The wall comes out. Nowhere to go. He puts the release out. Going to try to jet away. And guess what? It will be enough. And here's the counter. Actually, nice pull-up with the discharge. Easy kill right there. Well played right there. The spider sting. He saved it for the better target. Pebbles gets gone on two. And a double tap for Imba Boy. Obviously, Farrell showing his presence as well. Beautiful patience by Imba Boy. He could have easily spider stinged the empath right there, even though she was already dead. You know, just out of like, oh, I want to get a guaranteed kill. But saved it for the right, tar uh, right target there. Yeah, certainly very well played by the Legion team. And just, yeah, that slag might miss. Really coming back to haunt them. Probably would have gotten the kill on Flux and got out, as ultimately the discharge, I think, is what set up perhaps all those kills. I don't know. Pharaoh might have caught them anyway, but 
Yeah, lacks of execution, Breaky. Yep. It's a big deal, and here's Newers. <laughs> it, it certainly is, especially at this level. Uh, Arachna, Energizer, Steam Beats, you know, that's that's pretty obvious, but where do you think he's going from? What did he just buy, actually? I didn't notice it. I uh, didn't catch Mid it. We'll see. Yeah, we do got Flux being initiated, though. He gets chucked back in, so no Steam Boots, remember, not taking enough in the end, or is he? Oh my god, he might be in the end. The auto attack hit is going to be enough, so Flensmeister getting credit for the kill right there. Rocket coming up for Pharaoh hits multiple empath, uh, or excuse me, engineer. He's being caught on by Pebbles right here, but here comes the counter now. Nice mummy wall from Zane coming out playing that Pharaoh. Pebbles gonna be locked down, gets the lagmites off, but just a little bit too late. A parasite chill station, empath gonna go down as well. Double tap for Saint Rocks in the background. He has a double damage here. Don't know if he stole it or not, but he has it. That's what matters. And this middle tower also gonna be pushed now. So Justice League getting some justice here in game number two. On their way to forcing a third game, still early, but they have the start they were looking for, that's no doubt. Yeah, just well played. I love their adjustment, sitting that Arachna top. Uh, just, it's unfortunate for the Hellborn team because I feel like if those three heroes didn't get kind of caught there when they were doing their counter warding, I feel like the Arachna would have started out bottom. And yeah. uh, I think this game could be a lot, a lot different if that had happened because down there, she is freaking food. So uh, top lane, actually, Flux uh -oh. is going to get comboed here. And I think he's not long for this world. So, yeah, Steam Boots are Ghost Marchers. Yeah. Probably yeah. dead there. <laughs> that was de um, He doesn't even have his E either. And, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about this a lot of the times when I when I see a flex. It's like, obviously, the E, sure, the attack rate, okay, it's not that big of a deal. But it's really just so you can change your, especially your ultimate. Now, actually, top lane, they do initiate right here. On a scout, the spider sting comes out. And Jonas, the fan, pretty much knows he is dead here. As it, they do get the easy kill, so good kill once again, and obviously this Legion team, once again, going for the aggressive play style is understandably so. Um, but yeah, Flux not getting any points into that polarity swap yet, so it doesn't allow him to push people away with that discharge of his. Uh, do you have a thought on that? I mean, do you like to see... I think it's even? kind of a greedy build. I think one point ease. I mean, you're giving up one point in your Magnet Surge, or, yeah. or, or release, probably Magnet Surge. Uh, it's not really going to make or break a whole lot, I feel like. So, yeah, I think one point is well worth it. But, uh, I mean, it could be game-changing, but <laughs> probably won't be. I'd be surprised if it was. And in this bottom lane, uh, and four and Pebbles kind of hanging around each other, looking for some openings. But Legion Team right now yeah. is quite close to each other, so I won't be able to find anything. Or I can actually picked up a Helm in the Black Legion, so... Yep. Uh, it's a pretty good item. I think just the way they're snowballing right now, he'll just be able to freaking live through about anything, especially the uh, Nymphora Pebbles TP. He is well out of the range of being killed by that at this point. So, um, pretty good pickup. Probably could have gone for something greedy and farmed a lot, but just the way this game's going, it seems like they want to keep up the pressure, and this is certainly a very cost-effective, uh, efficient early mid-game item. Yeah, you know, love to see it. And actually, example, we saw State Green recently. It seems like they're really starting to value that Helm of the Black Legion as games progress on here. You know, whether that's a shift or just a strategy in general that they're more and more fond of for whatever reason. Um, Arachna going that here, and it, I, yeah, it definitely makes sense and a, and a good choice for her. It keeps up the aggression play style. And it, it makes it difficult for the Hellborn team in terms of what they want to accomplish here. Now, Parasite sitting with a Wild Hunter in that middle lane. Port coming in. He's going to find an opening. Empath actually throwing out a wall right there, but Arachna comes in and gets the tower denied. Empath's going to be coming right there. The discharge was just Pharaoh will get a great connect right there on an M4, and she's going to go down as well. Bubbles is going to make his getaway, but again, the response is there for the Legion side. And did they also get the bottom tower? Yes, they did. Engineer actually finished off the bottom tower while that was all happening. Wow. Seems like everything's going their way. They're playing yeah. beautifully right now. I like how Engineer stayed just secured the tower kill, and of course they got the deny. And I believe that was two kills, so just the supports. But uh, everything coming together beautifully for DCX. I feel like they're playing really well. Parasite just picked up his codex. He's actually at about 340 GPM himself, so mm -hmm. having a great game. Arachna quickly approaching 500 GPM, not really from farming per se, just all the kills they've been able to find. 7-0-3 on this Arachna. Um, Parasite. Oh, yeah, looks yeah. pretty good. Parasite just got casters cursed. Get owned. St. Rox. You got him, bro. Yeah, he was he was in a very iffy spot there. He had about half Maybe life, he got not much. Saint Rock's curse, not Caster's curse. Yeah. <laughs> not not in the friendliest of places there, as a result in his death. So, um, now I will say when seeing Arachna, um, she most certainly has carry presence, but at the same time, it, it's great to see her played in this style, but. 
I don't know for me, I don't know if it's the same for you, but when, when I do see Rakna, I think she might be better suited in the lineup overall with somebody else in her team that you kind of rely on as a carry, you know? Something like that scout suicide, you know, could have been beautiful. Something like another carry presence, whether it's a jungle, you know, wilds or a scout or a suicide wilds, so something like that. But this game, he really is the carry. I mean, they don't really have any backup options in that sense. Uh, do you think that is a problem, and would you like to see that if you see it in Rakna, or are you fine with her being that role? In some situations, I could certainly agree. And Bubbles in their hand is going to get an issue on the Spider Sting. He's going to come out. He doesn't even have the shells over the animal, so he is screwed. And he will go down to another pick. But um, the way they're playing right now, yeah, like you said, he is the carry. They don't really need anything. But in a game that's not quite this one-sided or this fast-paced, I could definitely see that being good. She doesn't really – I mean, yeah, this is the kind of carry I, I think she is. Like this early mid-game, dominate your lane, yeah. uh, run around, and – find those kills kind of carry. So yeah, not the best late game carry. So something to kind of secure the late game um, a little more effectively could be quite, could be a better choice. But here we go, Ricky. Pebbles like jump in and they get the one quick kill on an Engineer. It's going to be a second quick kill on a Flux as well. And now Rakuten is on trouble. She still has her Hardened Carapace. Will she even use it right here? She's going to put the slow on a Pebbles. There's Hardened Carapace. Comes out with the Marksman shot. Comes out, but it doesn't matter in the end. Just a little bit too much damage. Obviously, uh, that did not work out too well for the Legion team at all. Where was Parasite during all that? It seems like uh, either he wasn't there or just makes his getaway. And Pharaoh obviously not able to join the party either. So great counter right there from Lions. And this is going to open up a free Congo kill probably. Uh, there is no buybacks other than Flux, but even so, Rakna still there for another 30 seconds. They're going to try to harass maybe, but that's pretty risky. That was a huge fight. The momentum seems to have completely yeah. halted here. This is a pretty risky Congo though, Breaky. And here comes Feral. Oh. Holy crap, what a hook. He's going to catch two, but the chuck out. <laughs> and Scout will go down anyway. And then Parasite looks like he will fall as well. Feral is in a lot of trouble here. We'll be able to make it. Shell Surf probably is still on cooldown, actually. He might actually live. And here comes Flux even to give NG him some Flux, assistance. Angie Flux, Angie Flux. Here we wall. go. And, oh. Where's the engineer ult? There it is. Oh, Flint's Master will escape. There's the discharge. The rocket? No, just barely miss. And the Euro tablet build. It's working. Might be enough break. It's God. working. Can it get in release range? No, he cannot. So Bubbles will barely live. You know, I, I, as I was saying, I was. it seemed like it was going to come together perfectly. But wow, what man mode right there by the Legion team. It was no doubt risky, but at the same time, Scout and Pebbles were low on life. They, they were pretty much going all in right there, trying to finish off Congor. And as we saw, just simply a Pharaoh coming in, and obviously a Codex snipe from Parasite to guarantee it, does the job. Now we do see right here, Empath charging in. Bubbles, is he going to Shell Surf? No, he is not. He does use the damage, but not the Forty. Rock being gone now by Pebbles. Not going to be nearly enough for the combo damage. The Helm of the Black Legion definitely coming into play right there. Scout is chasing, though. There's Harder Carrier Press. He has a Spider Sting. Good use it on Scout. Good start cutting. And gets Tablet and Ford, though, into Scout. But now he needs to run away. Bubbles and Empath are on the chase. Nobody judges just yet. Make that Flux dead. Arachna's dead as well. Lion Esports Club is working for them. A Parasite will get the counter kill on Empath in the process. He can't take over Ancients, unfortunately, with an Infest. So he's going to need to find something else. I don't know if that's going to happen. Going to kind of just hope that they just run away. <laughs> And that's not going to work, so he gets collapsed on. Engineer, in the meantime, he's not out of the woods just yet. Literally, Zealstun may be from Nephora. Will it be attempted here? Don't run, he says. I'm your friend. Come, hug me. Hug me over here. Engineer's still running those. Zealstun. Oh, there's the grace of the nymph. Is it coming? Is it coming? It's a level four Zealstun. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, no, he's not even going to go for it. <laughs> All right. But. He gave up. Wow. I mean, Lions, not only do they clean it up in the end, but they get Congor. So when it's all said and done, Lions still wins the ultimate battle there. <laughs> yeah, this is the kind of game I was, like, I was hoping to see in game one. This has been 31 kills in 20 minutes. Couldn't ask for much more than that. And, uh, yeah, wow. Lions, it seemed like they're in such a deficit. Arachna was pretty poised to snowball out of control this game after some fantastic setups, especially with the assistance of Pharaoh they had. But, uh, whew, man, just couple of crazy fights. I'm not really sure how to describe them because they lasted for days. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they take the Congor, the Congor kill, Token of Life. Uh, it's called Token of Life. Yeah, Token of Life will be on scout here. And Jonas and Fan doing that recovery thing once again pretty well. It's in about 300. Pebbles even at about 400 himself. He's got the shrunken head. And with that shrunken head, I think Arachna might have to start prioritizing getting the spider sting onto Pebbles at this point because uh, without it, he's going to be pretty immune to about anything else they can throw at him. Yeah. He's definitely going to have free reign to just uh, pounding those auto attacks as well as flying around with this combo. Now, Portal Key is picked up by Flux, and they still have that Wombo Combo presence of Flux and Engineer, and you always have to be uh, 
concerned about that if you're Lion Esports Club in this case. So that's that's definitely one thing to keep in mind. Pebbles, though, cleaning up more triple stacks over here. Already another 1,300 gold already saved up. He's sitting on 455 GPM. And four is sitting next to him, as, as you would expect. They're trying to look for an opportunity. Maybe it does approach itself at the top lane. I mean, if they want to maybe dive Arachnid, not, not going to go for it in the middle end, though. We do have initiation. On to a couple of heroes right there. Bubbles trying to help turn things around with the shots around. Here comes Pebbles. Down goes Parasite right there. Energy field is used. The Amphora in the midst of it. Off to the side, though. Pharaoh is dead. Arachna is still not here. That's the biggest deal about this fight. She finally joins the party, but it's just way too late. And actually, Pebbles finds a friend right here. Spider Seek does come out of the Pebbles. So we'll slow them down, but they'll kill it off fairly quickly. So in the end, that'll be the end of that in terms of hero kills. But another big fight right there in favor of Lions, and that's, you know, they have that global presence with them four and Pebbles. Or Arachna, she had to run all the way over there and couldn't get there in time. Yeah, definitely. Lions starting to look stronger. Holy crap, if you look at the gold next XP. Yeah. What a swing. 4K, 9.5K. And to think, I felt like it was about a 4K, 5K, 5K lead for the Legion team <laughs> not too long ago. So, Lions looking stronger and stronger. I feel like Arachna's really falling off here. Uh, and here we go, Break. It could be a fight. Uh, they, oh. they know that the things are starting to fall off. They're trying to capitalize here, but nothing out of it. That No buybacks were used. That was just simply resurrection. So... They will fight them off, and they get the deny at least. Kind of a one small victory there for our Legion side. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, if they can manage to fight together, this is still most certainly a winnable game here for DCX. But it's gotten to that point now where uh, that's going to need to be the case because as aggressive as they were early on and setting up ganks themselves, uh, the pace of that has clearly changed. I mean, with Pebbles and his farm, that Nymph 4 presence on top of that, who is level 11 now, so she's going to start teleporting even another, perhaps that Empath, with her uh, to maybe go inside Pebbles, or you could even actually have Empath go inside Pebbles first and then teleport even a third one on top of that. So, um, yeah, it's a, a lot of gank presence really starting to come out now in favor of the Lion Esports Club. So the game the game pace definitely changing here specifically for DCX in a negative way. We'll see how they yeah, make it's their adjustments. definitely very hard to farm. Even if you're not utilizing the NTPs that much, just, yeah. the thought, just the presence of them is not alone to really change um, how, why you feel or where you feel safe farming. So, Imbu always feels pretty safe farming this top lane, but he could be in a little trouble. But speaking of trouble, Flux, he looks dead. Yeah, and he is. Yep. Arachna actually poured to the bottom lane during all that. He was hoping for a gank on a on a scout there, but the fight is still going on. Engineer being locked down. He has his ultimate. They don't have the Flux combo, though, of course, being dead. He throws out a keg, but he dies shortly after. Double tap coming out. Parasite trying to finish off Bubbles. Can't even do that, though. Uh, he actually gets uh, killed in the process. I mean, I'm sure it's probably more if he got jumped, but tried to fight him off. Not going to happen, though. So Rachna, you know, has had the same items now for it seems like a long time. He got those pretty early on. Immoboy had a hell of a start, but it has slowed down immensely, and this is not going to help things. Nifora even TPing the only direction that it seems like he can go. <laughs> not even going to matter. It's it's just amazing how much momentum this game has changed in. I mean, that Kong really fight has. basically. I thought we were going to be seeing like a game three. Yeah. Right. Cheeks it up a notch, I guess. They just had some fantastic team fights. I think Super KG's Pebbles. And uh, Flint's Meister's Bubbles, no, no slouch either. But the Pebbles this game, doing work. Yeah, I mean, they, they focused a lot on Jonas, a fan at the top lane, you know, diving him a couple times, getting some early kills, specifically from Imbaboy playing that Arachna. So, you know, they, they were they were accomplishing that, especially with Scout Jonas Van carrying last game, despite even playing the Suicide a little different. Um, but yeah, you said it, both Pubbles, the Pubbles combination, they've stepped up and have been no doubt the uh, MVP status here for the Hellborn side, so... Again, I, I still like to believe that the Legion team, not only do they have a comeback chance, but with the ultimate combination, it, it still remains, but things just got a lot tougher, uh, uh, no doubt. And, and I want to comment, too, on, on the Flux pickup. Another reason, not only good for the Engineer combo, but another reason that it could have been thinking, too, speaking of Scout, is obviously he can't be good against him with his ultimate, as it does give vision for the time that the discharge is off and the lingering after that. I believe it's for at least three seconds or so. Um, doesn't actually say on the tooltip. But anyways, another reason for that perhaps, but obviously with the way this game is going now, 26 minutes in, in favor of Lions nonetheless.
Pebble's sitting up top here. He he's waiting. I wouldn't yeah, be surprised if he's, he's doing going quickly. In the yep. Oh yeah, and a four TP, and they are going to jump a rocket now. She got the hard and carapace offers. That could be the difference maker. Vero initiates. Never mind. Just way too much damage still. Scouts chasing with Empath inside. Flux on the run. I think Lions Esports Club is just going to be too much in the end, man. PCX <laughs> dropping like flies. Yeah, so, so I was kind of shocked because Parasite just ran back to accept his death. But yeah, it looks like they might have had a, a really good setup <laughs> there for the Flux NG. But uh, as Engineer was running up, of course, he gets silenced. There is a large amount of silence, but wow. Yeah. How quickly did this game go from looking like we're going to a game three to just an absolute stop? Yeah, I... Uh... I agree. I, I definitely thought Game 3 was on the horizon, and again, that could have been possibly even another series, depending on what happened, but all of a sudden, completely turns, and before you know it, Lion Esports Club, they are victorious. Not only do they take the game, they take the series, but that, of course, means they are your tournament champions for the Alienware European Challenge. So congratulations to Lion Esports Club, deservingly so, taking the victory over Justice League. And that was just well played. Great turnaround potential coming out from them. And, you know, again, DCX showing showing their strengths and most certainly a team worthy of diamond and look forward to seeing how they do, especially going into this weekend. But uh, obviously, Lion Esports Club, at least today, once again, the better team here when it came down to it. So, again, congratulations to them, making some good money. Um, speaking of that, I'm actually kind of curious who uh, DCX – okay, so – I was just actually looking at the brackets real quickly for the Hauntour division. Again, we're going to go more into that tomorrow, obviously, with the podcast that we talked about. But uh, DCX, it doesn't get easier, as expected. Going into Diamond, they're actually matched up against TMSR in the first <laughs> round. So that's Jesus. possibly matchable, even cast. I mean, that's definitely a great matchup there. So as they, honestly, there are a lot of good matchups as expected. So anywho, though, any final thoughts on this series here as far as even and as today goes? I mean, fairly shorter, but... Uh, I just want to point out how... DCX just seemed with both games to have kind of a fantastic early and approaching the mid-game start where everything was just clicking perfectly. But uh, it seems like once they get to that phase when we approach, or not approach, but as we hit the mid-game, and then of course, uh, of course we didn't really see the late game here, but the game before, they just seem kind of to crumble. Nothing goes their way anymore. So yeah. uh, I don't know if that's a trend in all their games, but certainly in this in this best three, I believe it was quite a factor. So um but on the other hand, Lions looking so strong. Uh, cannot wait to see them matched up against some of the other teams in Cycle One. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just going to be some. I mean, I don't. I feel like this Cycle One, um, the way SG and Lions have been playing, especially, especially uh, they might be the two teams to beat. But it's still pretty up in the air. Breaking. We're not. We don't have SG just kind of stomping on everyone nowadays. You know, with the with this new season, uh, we could have you know a new. A new king, so to speak, <laughs> or we could just have a bunch of people just just clawing for the top. So I'm pretty yeah. interested to see who is going to be the best. Yeah, you know, it's uh, again, we'll definitely discuss more of this on tomorrow's podcast show. But uh, it, we got 16 teams here in the cycle number one, as it's always going to be through all 10 cycles. I, I I've said this before, I would not be surprised. You know, last season we had ultimately two winners of, of all the cycles, obviously State Green and Trademark Esports winning four each. This season I find that very hard to believe that's gonna be the case. Just the way things are starting, it's already a lot different. Even even the way things are starting this season compared to season one, you had season one, it was complexity and trademark were really the two teams that everyone was eyeing. And it did start out that way, especially with trademark, I believe even winning the first three cycles. So I find that very hard to believe. That's going to be the same here for cycle or for season two, even. And it's, I think that's just evident with all the new teams that we have that are coming up. And and uh, we definitely still, I mean, we have some strong teams still on the horizon, as well as ones that are still even there. So it's going to be fun. And again, we'll talk about that more tomorrow on the podcast. One more time about that. Um, that's going to be tomorrow at I believe the scheduled time for it is 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. That should be, uh, what is that, 20 hundred Central European time for those that uh, do want to tune in. And again, we're going to not only be previewing cycle number one for the Diamond Division, but we also plan to be joined by hopefully uh, at least Emperor, if not Nova as well, and see how things are going over there in Southeast Asia, how, uh, how their success has been recently, and what's coming up for them. Because again, that season is obviously thriving very well, especially in the Thailand region. And uh, it doesn't seem like we, we get enough information out of them. It, it seems like there's just so much going on over there. So I'm, I'm actually very excited for that uh, to see how things are progressing. So you think you might join us tomorrow, Riser? Uh, yeah, for sure. I, awesome. I kind of agree. I'd like to, see, I'd like to talk to uh, Nova or Emperor or both of them. Yeah. <laughs> 
depending on what happens. And I did, yeah, I'm kind of more curious about like just life in general, what what goes on over sure. there, and got to ask Emperor about his his uh, captain's tendencies to make his team do physical activity because I don't know if I could stand up to that breaking. It's a good thing I'm not on that team. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when I heard about that, uh, <laughs> some fun stuff. Yeah, you're right, though. I, just to, Again, they have their own gamer house and everything. It's always fun to you know, kind of get in their head and see what it's – kind of get that experience for yourself almost as just for talking with them, see what it's like over there. So, yeah, th it is more than just the game itself, of course, which will be cool. So, again, hopefully that does happen tomorrow. I can't make any 100% guarantees, but it does sound like at least Emperor is, is willing to do so. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as far as our cast goes today, that is going to be wrapping things up. So, again, the Alienware champions here. Congratulations to Lion Esports Club more, one more time, deservedly so, especially even going into the United States to say, you know, they were even the favorites um, with the being a European region lock on top of everything else. So, um, and th th they did come through, but Justice League gave them a fight. Of course, not enough in the end. So, well, that is going to be wrapping things up. So, one more time, shout out to you guys, as always, the viewers. Shout out to Pamman over here, doing work, as always. And shout out to Aku Taco. It's going to be his last day tomorrow. Our intern. We're going to miss him. We're going to miss him. Uh, no, but uh, had fun as always. Hopefully you guys will tune in tomorrow with that set of the podcast. And again, on a Saturday, it all begins. Han Tour Season Number 2, Cycle 1, Diamond Division specifically for us. It will begin, and it's going to be a blast. We have just nothing but great heroes of New Earth in front of us. Again, over the next six to seven months with Han Tour Season 2. It, it's, it's, I just... Mind is freaking blowing every time I talk about it. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow with the podcast and on Saturday with Hunter Season 2. Have a good night, guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the first edition of the Community Breakdown. My name is HJR. I'm your community manager. And my goal here is to bring to you the latest and greatest news straight from the Han community. Recently, we ran a contest called the Creative Continuum Number 10 Haiku Hero. What we did in this contest was have participants and players write haikus about their favorite positions, including mid, support, suicide, carry, jungle, and a wild card. The event went great with over 150 posts, and I'd like to give a special shout out to the winners, which were Darkron008, Adrenor, Naive, Jimmy Raynor, Eskel, and Jenny Pie. For winning the contest, each of the players received 250 gold coins in-game, the Haiku Hero account icon, and the Souls Bulwark Award on the forums. In case you didn't know what the Creative Continuum contests are, they typically are announced in the general discussion section of the forums, and they involve mixing Han with the artistic creativity of the community. If you're interested in participating in the next Creative Continuum, look for it within the next week on the general discussion section of the forums. As you all know, or if you didn't know, Han has four separate regions, NAU, LAT, CIS, and SEA. All these regions patch at different times during the week. NAU starts it off on Friday, while the other three regions get their patches either on Tuesday or Wednesday the following week. What we're trying to do with this next patch is push the NAU patch time to Wednesday the following week so that each region receives the newest material and content within 24 hours of each other. Gen Con Indy 2013 is right around the corner. For those of you who don't know what Gen Con is, it's a gaming convention that takes place in the Indiana Convention Center and will be taking place from August 15th to August 18th. Heroes of North will be at the event, and in honor of our presence, we're going to have a tournament called Gen Con. The tournament will be composed of two different sections. One will be a portion online, and one will be a portion at the Convention Center. If you're interested in participating in the online portion, signups will begin on August 12th. Look for further information in the general discussion section of the forums. Community member Fury recently ran a hat tournament in honor of the patch Han 3.2 Solomon's Fortune. A hat tournament is a tournament where people sign up individually and get placed on a team as opposed to signing up as a full five-man roster. The tournament was played only three hours after Han 3.2 hit New Earth, so each of the players had to experience all the new balance changes firsthand in this tournament. The winning team consisted of Dare Rock, Beetle Bear, Fresh Rape, A13 Strat, and Blood Recruiter. Each player on the winning team took home 600 gold coins, as well as the pride of knowing they came together and conquered Fear You's hat tournament. Big thanks to Fear You for throwing the tournament and to all those who participated. If you're interested in participating in tournaments of this nature, then please continue to check the general discussion section of the forums for more information because there's always events going on. 
If you feel like you're better than the S2 employees at Han, then I'm giving you the chance to prove it. In the upcoming weeks, look for more news on an S2 vs Community Tournament where you can pit your skills against all the S2 employees including S2 staff, moderators, and GMs. It'll be a 2v2 tournament on Grim's Crossing and there'll be gold coin prizes for first, second, and third. And if, per chance, the community beats S2 and end up, ends up winning the tournament, then there will be a special bonus for the entire community. So start training right now and maybe you can be the hero of the community. Speaking of S2 employees, we were recently asked how many S2 employees are there? Well, to be specific, we have 81 employees in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and another 19 in the California office. We're bringing on two more next week to officially break that 100 employee mark, and in the future, we're looking for, who knows, maybe a thousand? Either way, that's been my time here. I'm HAR, thanks for listening, and hopefully you got a better insight of what's happening in the community on this first edition of Community Breakdown. All right, welcome back to Honcast. I'm Akko Taco. Let's get it on. <laughs> See you guys. Nostalgia, you'd spoil even two.